Oh, hey, everybody. Good morning. It's Sunday morning. I'm not exactly chipper. I worked all night, but uh, I came over here to uh, throw my discs. And excuse me, folks. Sorry about this. Um, I was uh, watching some TikTok because I can't help it. I don't think I'm addicted to it, but sometimes it's the only thing interesting, you know, to go through the things. And um, I happen to see... Um, a little cat. So I, it reminded me of a story, and I'll relate the story to you now. Um, it's a, it's a weird one. It's a sad one, and it had kind of a happy ending. Uh, when I lived with the world's dumbest man, and that was um, it, that used to be my friend MJ. MJ was the world's dumbest man, but he was unseated. It it wasn't his fault, but he was unseated by my ex landlord, um, who is a little Cuban guy and um, he ha he does not think in a stellar manner about me. He thinks that I'm um, um, less than adequate in my mental um, faculties, <clears throat> almost in a comical way. In fact, in a comical way. Uh, and um, he was uh, the first to say that uh, when I saw him and I was, asking him about this he said he was going to be the first to get it soon as it came out he was coming he was going to be the first one in line so um he beat out my friend mj on that one i i have to admit so mj once again foiled uh for uh, taking the spot there but anyways uh what i'll do is uh, tell you a little story and um, it, it's kind of a sad story, but uh, it, it, it had a kind of an odd uh, outcome. I was uh, living at that little Cuban guy's house. And um, yeah, very nice place because he took care of it. And um, used to drive me crazy because he was like one of these Spanish guys that's got to keep everything clean. Cut his yard every three, four days. And then he would, of course, reach into my uh, truck and the back of my truck there because I used to live there, and grab my handheld blower and blow all the time. And it just kind of irritated me. I don't know why, because I had two handheld blowers. I didn't have backpack blowers. I had handhelds, but I didn't like it much. It just something really bothered me about that. It was just like he was OCD about it. And um, But he was an otherwise all right guy. I mean, uh, it was I, I, it was profitable for me to stay there. It, it was good. It was a good, safe place. Uh, he was smart, too. In a lot of ways, he was smart. Uh, I watched him um, I watched him make a door in the side of a house. Um, he took a chisel and he banged out the you know the the wall and he made a beautiful door and he he did it like quickly, like within like two days, made a door and it looked pretty good and put the um, mold, you know, like put all that stuff around it and stuff. he was he, he was pretty good. But uh, he became a boat captain. Anyways, um, when I lived at his house, uh, a cat had kittens. And um, the, 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 I don't know what the cat was thinking because usually they try to put the kittens underneath something like a shed or a house or, you know, whatever garage, you know, whatever it is. And this cat was a black cat. Uh, evidently it was black cat the mother i didn't i saw the mother and the mother ran off and that's how i knew something was going on and in the grass uh as i recall just in the middle of the grass and he had a very well kept yard in the backyard um there were four kittens four or five it wasn't more than five it was probably four and um it had rained real bad like it is right now. And it had been raining like that for a couple of days. And the they, they the kittens may have been all right had it not rained so much. But um, maybe those cats were seven, eight days old. They were still very small. But they might have been like seven days old. That would be my guess, like a week old. And um, I started picking them up. And, um, you know, like they had like, like insects flying all around them when I picked them up, 
uh, you know, the little micro insects. So you, you knew something was going on. There were uh, uh, little bugs on another one that was eating out parts of the eye socket and all that kind of stuff. It was really, really bad. And I don't know what the deal was because I was there every day. I don't know how I didn't see it, but um, it was just really sad. And these poor things were still alive and they were like shaking like that, you know, like in death throes, you know, and um, it was really terrible for, you know, it's terrible for anybody to see that, you know, I mean, like you like to say it's just, you know, cats and there's millions of them and you know what happens every day. But when you see it, you know, you, you, it becomes part of you, you know what I mean? And you experience the sadness of it, you know, there it's, it's one of God's creatures, you know, let me put it to you that way. And they're innocent, you know? So I looked and that's what I did. I picked up the cat, the little kittens. They were probably about a week old, maybe four or five days old, something like that. They weren't very big. And as I tried, I looked at the eyes and their eyes were still closed. And when I opened the eyes, the eyeball fell out on, on uh, most of them. And it, there were insects and little, you know what I mean? It was, it was really bad. And these poor things were just, um, I couldn't figure out what to do because they were so far gone that um, it wouldn't have made any difference anyway. But um, I had a machete and I sharpened it. And I said, I'm going to, uh, you know, mercifully end these things lives. And um, I went and I got my machete and, it, and I sharpened it and I went to do it. And um, it didn't go as planned. I won't get into it. And it just wasn't as easy as I thought. And um, I don't think it made any difference. They were in the final death throes of their lives. And uh, <clears throat> I got to the last one and I opened up because the eyes were closed and it was like glue. You know what I mean? Like when something like that, it's like glue. So I had to open up the eye and um, it was all slimy. And I took my finger like that and the eyeball um, came out. And, um, but it was alive. And then on the other side, I opened up its eye and it looked like about half of its eye was surviving. It was the, the eye was swollen shut, but that eye was intact. So I took that little kitten, I brought it inside and I washed it off in the sink and I washed off its eye and, uh, <clears throat> And, uh, and, uh, what I did was, um, are you there? Yeah. I'm telling a story. Just take me a minute. So it's my wife on the other end here. And, uh, so I didn't know what to do with it, to be honest with you. To be fair, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know whether to end its life mercifully, as mercifully as I could or if it could get some help. And I mean, I, I, I couldn't do it. I'm not gonna be able to pay $150 for, you know, <clears throat> that, that bill. So across the street, there was a, a guy that lived um, and he was a real gentle guy. And he had a, I think he, he was older. He was like maybe like 58 or 60. And I think he had his granddaughter that used to come see him, but he looked pretty young and he was like one of these green piece uh, people. And um, I walked over to him and I put the kitten in my shirt and I walked over to him and I said, I, I really don't know what to do. I said, I don't know what to do. There were four, there were four kittens back there and they were all, they were all, in terrible, terrible condition. And this one right here, it's lost one eye, but the other eye doesn't look good, but at least it's there. Although his eyes, its eye was really swollen and it was all nasty. And the glue continued to, it, the, that pus was like glue. And I said, you know, what do I do? And then he took the cat, he took the kitten and he said, um, 
I'll see what I can do. So what he did was he, um, he, he took it to the vet and, um, he saved that little kitten's life. And I wasn't there for too long. I was there for maybe like a year after that. And I can remember that that cat, he took really good care of that little cat and it, it started getting bigger and it, I think he told me that the cat had around 15% of its vision in one eye. It was almost blind, but it learned to adapt and it adapted enough to where it could go out and, and just stay outside with the other cats that were there. And I know it saw because I could see it chasing like lizards and things like that. I could see it. So the cat wound up and it grew to be a great big cat. It was like a real long black cat. It turned out to be a really big cat. I was surprised. And um, I felt good about that. You know, I felt bad about it because um, I euthanized the other three. And that one I almost did too. But I wound up taking it and wound up saving its life. So, um, you know, um, it's just like one of those odd, weird um, half nice stories. That was a true story. And I, you know, I felt like maybe I did something good there, you know, and uh, I was so happy to see that kitten survive. Anyways, I'm here and I'm going to make another video after this because it's slightly raining right now, uh, just a little bit. And I think I can get in a round of throwing with my discs here. So I bid you all adieu and I hope you enjoyed my story. It's a true one and I'm sticking by it. Um, see you later, and I'll see you here shortly. Bye.